Today at the UN, a lot of news. The Security Council passing a resolution for a ceasefire and hostage release resolution in Gaza without condemning Hamas for the October 7th massacre. The U.S. deciding to abstain, according to the White House, letting that resolution pass instead of vetoing it. So Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu says he is now canceling a visit to the U.S. by his top advisor, Ron Dermer, and his national security advisor for meetings that were to happen at the White House and the State Department on Wednesday. Today's resolution demanded an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza during the holy month of Ramadan, which ends in just over two weeks. Joining us now is NBC's Raf Sanchez from Tel Aviv. And we should point out there is already an Israeli defense delegation here for meetings at the Pentagon. But there was going to be a much bigger and higher level meeting on Wednesday at the White House involving Ron Dermer, the former longtime ambassador here from Israel and the closest advisor, of course, to Netanyahu. And that is being canceled. Raf? That's right, Andrea. This is Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's way of signaling his fury that the U.S. allowed this Security Council resolution to pass. The Prime Minister, in a statement put out a little while ago, accusing the U.S. of abandoning its position at the U.N. Security Council, saying he is calling off that visit by one of his closest advisors and Israel's national security advisor, a visit that President Biden specifically requested from him in their phone call at the beginning of last week, their first phone call in more than a month. Israel is also indicating it is not planning to cease fire. The Israeli foreign minister in just the last couple of minutes saying the state of Israel will not stop the fire. We will destroy Hamas and continue to fight until the last of the hostages return home. Now, Andrew, this is sort of subtle U.N. Security Council politics you are very familiar with. But just for the benefit of our viewers, the U.S. put up a resolution on Friday calling for an immediate ceasefire linked to the release of the hostages. Today, this resolution put up calling for an immediate ceasefire and the immediate release of the hostages, but not linking the two of them. That is why Netanyahu is saying that the U.S. has abandoned its position. The U.S. ambassador at the United Nations trying to say earlier that the spirit of the resolution is the same. But it does not include that crucial linkage. Now, Hamas is welcoming this resolution, saying that it is prepared to release hostages as long as Israel releases prisoners. But the Israelis at this point are saying that they will not cease fire as a result of this resolution. And it is not clear where that puts Israel in terms of international law. The American ambassador at the United Nations referred to this resolution as being non-binding. It's not really clear what she meant by that. UN Security Council resolutions are binding. It may be that she was referring to the fact that this is a kind of resolution that cannot be enforced militarily. But the, it, the UN's highest body is now ordering Israel to cease fire. That is a resolution that the U.S. allowed to pass, and the Israeli government is saying that they will not abide by it at this point. Andrea? And, Raf, the U.S. — I was on a conference call on the record with John Kirby, speaking for the White House, of course, and he said that the reason why they vetoed it — excuse me, why they didn't veto it, they abstained, which let it pass, is because it did not condemn October 7th, the massacre. And that's what they have been demanding. So he is saying that this is not a change in U.S. policy, because they, there were a lot of U.N. resolutions, as you well know, leading up to this, uh, three at least that I can think of, that the U.S. vetoed for, on behalf of Israel because it did not specifically condemn Hamas for October 7th. So they're saying that, that's not, that this is not a change in position, but certainly in the context of the visit that was anticipated by Ron Dermer, this top advisor, and the key negotiations or discussions that had reached a, a pretty angry pitch uh, between the White House and Netanyahu over Rafa and whether they were going to go ahead with an invasion to get those four battalions of Hamas out of Rafa um, that the U.S. opposed. This was a key moment to de-escalate. But the other key thing that's happened is the weekend talks, where there are reports that Israel has agreed 
to a proposal that's on the table for the hostage releases for some seven or eight hundred Palestinians to be released, to be released including some terrorists, uh, some, some known killers, convicted killers, uh, in exchange for the 40 hostages. And it would seem if there's no ceasefire, there's no way to get those hostages safely out. So that this determination to continue um, hostilities not only stops the aid from getting in, more aid from getting in, but will prevent those hostage releases, the hostage release to go for, from going forward or from being accepted. Right. It, it becomes a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. The Israelis say if there is a deal on the hostages, there will be a ceasefire. Hamas is saying if there's a ceasefire, the hostages will be released. And what order you implement those is key. Uh, as you said, there was supposed to be this delegation by senior Israeli officials heading to the White House with a very specific purpose. They were there to hear out American concerns about a a potential Israeli invasion of the city of Rafa in southern Gaza, where some 1.5 million Palestinian civilians are sheltering. The White House has made very clear at this point it opposes any large-scale Israeli offensive into Rafa. It has said that it believes it will be a disaster, that there is nowhere safe for those civilians to go. So the point of that meeting was for the Israelis to hear the American concerns, but also to hear what was supposed to be a set of American proposals of alternative alternatives to a full-scale invasion. Now, we don't have the exact details of what the White House was proposing, but it's likely to be along the lines of targeted raids. That meeting no longer going to happen. And as you say, this is a real, real point of tension, but public tension between Israel and the United States right now. Andrew. Ruff Sanchez, thank you for all of that. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.